I dreamt of the dragon. I have awoken him. Can't you see all around you the dragon's breath? Excalibur, the 1981 epic fantasy drama directed by John Borman resurrects the ancient Arthurian legend as a beautifully written and visualized fantasy classic. I'm sure that most of you are familiar with the story of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, but for the uninitiated, there may or may not have been a British king in the 5th and 6th centuries who was a total badass named Arthur. The legend goes that with the help of a wizard named Merlin, he wielded a magic sword named Excalibur entrusted by a magical lady of the lake and formed a kingdom called Camelot. The story has been told countless times in every form of media, and sometimes some pretty heavy liberties are taken with the source material, like when the knights were a piece of materia in Final Fantasy, or when King Arthur teamed up with Disney's Gargoyles. Or the time the Stargate crew found out Merlin was an alien all along. Or the time King Arthur somehow managed to get himself trapped in a cave of glass so Merlin summoned an entire football team from modern times to spring him out. There are quite a few more examples, but you get the idea. Strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. Supreme executive power derives from a mandate from the masses, not from some farcical aquatic ceremony. As far as I can tell without a master's degree in English literature, this film is only moderately accurate to the original stories that they're based on. Making a few changes here and there and combining certain elements from several different source materials, it is indeed a unique retelling of the legend, but at least in comparison to the above examples, this film stands out as an authentic experience following the entire lifespan of King Arthur from the circumstances surrounding his conception to his eventual death. This film deviates from the traditional three-act structure, and as a result can seem a bit convoluted, so let's go over some of the main talking points of the plot. Spoilers for a century-old mythology ahead. Our story begins with Uther Pendragon, Arthur's father who is at war for power against a local duke. With the help of Merlin, Uther wields the legendary sword Excalibur, which allows him to win the duke's loyalty, becoming king of the land. Immediately deciding that isn't good enough, Uther throws away the alliance by lusting after the duke's bride Egrain. After failing to break the duke's defenses, Uther turns to Merlin, seeking to fulfill his lust for Ygrin. Merlin agrees to help, but for a steep price. Awakening the dragon and summoning the dragon's breath, Merlin disguises Uther as the duke so he can get rapey with Ygrin in front of her daughter Morgana as the duke is impaled attempting to counterattack Uther's forces. Ygrin marries Uther and gives birth to Arthur, whom Merlin takes away as part of the agreement. Uther immediately regrets his deal with the necromancer and gives chase, getting ambushed and killed, but not before lodging the legendary blade Excalibur into a stone. We jump ahead a few years to find a young Arthur being raised by a lord named Sir Ector during a jousting tournament. Fate quickly brings Arthur to draw Excalibur from the stone, being declared king, much to the dismay of many local knights. Arthur pursues Merlin into the forest to discuss his past, while disagreements regarding his legitimacy as king turn into war among the local knights. Through his bravery, Arthur is able to win the loyalty of those questioning his legitimacy, unites the land and forms Camelot as well as the Round Table. Arthur marries Guinevere as his sister Morgana confronts Merlin about the past and that she also has the talent of necromancy. At first Merlin teaches Morgana the ways of the necromancer but begins to suspect that she's plotting against Arthur and attempts to bind her as Arthur uncovers a secret affair between Guinevere and one of his trusted knights, Lancelot. In a rage, Arthur casts Excalibur into the ground, giving Morgana the upper hand against Merlin, reversing the binding ritual. Morgana then disguises herself as Guinevere and gets rapey with Arthur, birthing a child named Mordred. Cursed by Morgana, Arthur is drained of his vitality and the land along with him. He sends out his knights in search of the Holy Grail. All but one are met by gruesome fates. The final knight Percival is able to obtain the Holy Grail and restore Arthur who recovers Excalibur and revives Merlin just in time for the epic final confrontation with Morgana and Mordred. And that's just the very basic plot outline. I'm skipping over a ton of details, this film is absolutely massive, and its influence on many filmmakers to this very day is undeniable. Hopefully at this point, it's no surprise that I absolutely love this film. Not only is it my favorite adaptation of Arthurian lore, it's one of the most epic and visually masterful fantasy films of all time. The cinematography is simply stunning. Every shot in this film is epic, and the attention to detail is amazing. For example, every shot with a magical element is lit with this eerie green-blue light emanating from the source of magic. Or this shot of a crow eating an eye took days because they actually had to wait for an actual crow to eat an actual eye. It's only in the film for a few seconds, but that's the kind of detail that makes this film so special. It's one of those films that you can watch again and again and still find entire layers of new elements each time. So if you've never had time to see this classic, I highly suggest giving it a watch, or two, or three. It's an iconic fantasy film that stands the test of time. So those are my thoughts on Excalibur. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Once again, this was Fade Dragon Tear. Thanks for watching. Peace out. I will build a round table.